Okay, let me sure my screen, I'm screen sharing. Again, you guys can unmute yourselves if you want. Um, just real quick, can you guys see my screen okay? <clears throat> oh, yes, we can see it. Okay, cool. I wanted to start a little bit different just by uh, warming up a little bit. Wanted to go over a couple trade recaps uh, using strictly the topics discussed in the following presentation about supply and demand zones. Um, I'm going to go over a trade that I won and a trade that I lost using the uh, using these strategies. Um, and after I'm done, if you guys want to go over a couple of your trade recaps, we totally can. It would be cool if you guys want to, uh, you know, see show us your show us your winners or losers. How you know how we could improve them, this and that. So <clears throat> according to progress, go ahead and start. This is actually one that uh, right here that we caught on futures. We caught this one on live. Um, so we didn't catch this move up. Or actually, I think we did. We did catch this move up, but we only scalped it for a little bit. Um, so this whole time, we didn't chase this. We didn't chase this. We didn't chase this. Um, here, here uh, I saw this, this candle, this wick, come and touch this golden zone right here. Um, I didn't take position here because it's not really in the correct uh, context. This doesn't. This pattern doesn't suggest that an uptrend is about to end. It's not really in the correct context. So we didn't take a position here. Um, we're kind of bull flagging, bull flagging, bull flagging. We kind of want to take a position here. We can see these selling alerts, but we didn't. We were patient. We waited for price to come up into a zone. As price was approaching this zone, um, it was starting to create this rising wedge pattern. Um, on top of that, we got this selling wick in the golden zone. This 440.775 level is actually the 0.786 Fibonacci on the overall trend. Um, so once it tagged that, what we did or what I did, I'm not sure if people went ahead and took a position here, but what I did was I set a limit order right here at 440.775, and I was just going to risk the very top of this uh, bull flag, or I'm sorry, this rising wedge. So my risk would have only been one point. Uh, and price obviously never came back to it. So I went ahead and took a position right here with my stop loss being 44.0775. Um, so that was just a one and three tick risk. Uh, as you can see, using these strategies, your risk is really, really tight. Um, and if you're wrong, you, you can flip long immediately. In this case, we were right. Um, so we took it all the way down here. And I believe I sold my entire position on this uh, bear flag here. <clears throat> Sorry. I sold my entire position on this bear flag here. Um, yeah, I didn't really feel like holding through it. And then I also have a prop account right now and they kind of penalize me for leaving unrealized gains on the table. So I have to kind of play by their rules when trading futures at the moment. Um, so I took off my entire position right here. But you can see it, it, it is this golden zone ended up being the play of the day, even better than the box. See that we broke support here. So this 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 paid much better than, than the long paid. Um and now I'll go over to one that I lost. I think it was on spy. Yeah. So go clean chart. Let me just look for it real quick. I want to show you a minute. Um, oh, it was SPX. Sorry, let me pull up the style. There we go. Let me just find it. Um, no, not that one. That was actually a pretty good trade. I'm actually, I'll go over this one real quick too. Um, this is the spy calls that I took. Um, oh, I'm prompt to, I wasn't prompt. So, um, so price came down and immediately shot out of the zone. And I did not, uh, I did not take it long out of here because the candlestick was too big for me to catch. Um, and I also didn't take a short position here because this can I don't know, I don't know what happened. I was just, uh, I wasn't paying attention or something. Um, but when it came down here, it bounced, came up. I mean, this kind of played these two zones really fast. This must have been some kind of news day. But when it put in this double bottom here, it's my first position and I wrote it up to my next zone. Um, I believe this trade went for. 40 40 percent or so i trade the next day spy contract so my gains are never going to be like 100 200 percent i don't trade the zero dates they're just not for me 
So on the one dates, I was able to pull off like 40% on this, this move right here, this double bottom. Bam. Pretty nice. So I'm trying to find the one that I lost. It's here somewhere. Um, there it is. I marked it off. <clears throat> so. Right here. Um, I was interested that in taking a position here because it is bull flag, um, but I didn't take a position on this on this push at. Um, I don't know why. Um, it was just it was just bad. Probably was just too choppy for me. Um, but when we came up, we came down here, and I thought we were going to continue up. And my reasoning was this uh, little hammer candle. So I took a position when this wick formed, and then obviously you see the trade went against me. Um, my stop loss was actually just this. Uh, I was just going to risk and put the long position up. Again, you'll see that when I trade these, my, I really don't take a lot of risk. So my stop was just, see this doji right here? Um, just the bottom of this wick. That was going to be my stop. Um, obviously it hit, but I don't think I got out until like down here. Until I was like definitely long and all this support goes like it was not there. So uh, I didn't really stick to my stop loss there. I should have sticking to, you know, the doji, my doji stop loss. It normally works for me, but this time I just wasn't disciplined that day. But it happens. I'm sure, we've all been there. Um, with that being said, are there any questions about my trade recaps or would you like to uh, have a trade recap that you want to discuss before we start this presentation? If not, it's totally okay. I understand. Um, let's see here. Check the chat. Okay, it doesn't doesn't look like it. Okay, let's go ahead and start this presentation. Um, let's see. So I have a PowerPoint I did up for you guys. Oh, let's see. My slideshow from beginning. All right. All right. Um, first of all, thanks for uh, joining me on a Saturday night. I really appreciate it. I know it's not for everybody to come learn about the stock market on a Saturday night, but this really shows your guys' dedication, and I hope I make it worth it for you guys, um, especially if you were here for my first supply and demand class. Um, this is kind of gonna gonna kind of go over the same things, but there are some iterations since then. Give me a chat here. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I do appreciate if you've come to my first supply and demand class and made it to my second one here. Um, there is going to be some new information, a couple, uh, some new things for you guys. Um, so it'll be worth it for you guys as well. So with that said, supply and demand, how the smart money trades. Um, as you can see on my Amazon chart here, the best moves uh, came out of these supply and demand zones. You guys see that? Um, and these are zones that I drew probably like I think two months. Well, I try, I try to change them every. I try to redraw them every month. But Amazon, I kind of just left alone for a couple months. And as you can see, it's just they just work. Um, without much uh, without much editing to the zones. Um, let's see. All right. So, what are supply and demand zones? These are areas of the chart where price likes to make a big move. Um, as you can see, the Amazon chart. Every time price entered the zone, it just made a huge move. Um, the theory is that smart money and institutional investors, they have their limit orders set to buy or sell at a certain level. When price reaches this level, it tends to make a big move up or down due to, uh, due to the uh, large influx of buys or sells. So because there's hella limit orders there, um, like hella, the price is just going to make a gigantic move, um, either to the upside or the downside. Um, you're going to want to take position in these zones. It's going to maximize your risk to reward and your potential gains. Um, as you can see, like, again, look at that Amazon chart. If you take a position in the zone, you can just, you know, go along, leave it alone, and you're good for the next zone, um, more often than not. Um, let's see here. So I think, let's see, we're going to go ahead and check out. Let's see. Um, perfect. So I'm going to show you guys on the chart real quick. Um We'll go over to Apple, I guess. Apple is pretty, oh, we'll, we'll do Meta because Apple is currently at all time high. So I don't even have these zones in here. Uh, so we'll do Meta. <clears throat> uh, 
and let's just put it on like a 15 inch bit. And uh, these are zones that I drew after Meta's initial gap up. What I did was cap I had to go back to the previous year. Uh, see this huge gap up? Um, so once it was consolidating here, I got all my levels. It, 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 it gapped up and I was like, okay, um, I don't expect it to gap back down, especially in a bull market. So I started making targets to the upside. What I had to do was go back like to last year. And you can see that they've just been hitting no matter what. Um, <clears throat> these are, again, these are levels from, from, from last year, like maybe two years ago. Um, and see institutional buys and sells, they kind of just leave their limit orders in um, for months. You know, they don't trade like us. They just have, they're, they're very centered and forget it. You know, a lot of them are very just like, let's put our buys here and sells here and we're good to go. And they just set it and forget it. And they'll leave it there for months, you know, and they'll play it over and over. And when you look at this, we open here, bam, got kind of touch supply, came back down, bam, consolidated in supply, became support. Same thing here. You see that? Every time price enters a zone, this stuff in the middle, you don't, I mean, you can, I personally do not like to try a trade in between my zones because it's a lot of chop. As you can see, the best moves come from the zones. Like you get in a zone and then you get to enjoy this big candle to the upside, right? Like right here, this looks like a, a consolidation in the demand zone. Um, the previous day, and then we gapped up right into a supply zone. So you could have seen that we were we were uh, basing out in the demand zone the previous day and said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and swing calls because we're basing out in this demand zone. And then, I mean, this is 247 to 254. Like, you know, you don't even have to trade the rest of the day if you took a weekly on that. You know what I mean? And it just continues. It just continues. And now here, this is the golden zone. You see what happens when we reach the golden zone. Bam, huge move out. Like, I mean, I'm not even like, not barely, barely a red candle on this move out of this golden zone, right? And every single time we hit the golden zone, you see that it's like not even five, one, two, three, four, even four 15 minute candles, like 269 to 275, 276. Like that's your whole, you know, <laughs> that's your whole month right there if you're taking weeklies. And then same thing, the catch resistance and then the golden zone started becoming resistance again. Huge sell-off. Like I'm talking not even a red or a green candle. Really. So that's why these zones are going to give you the best risk to reward. You know, if your bias is long, you just take your stop off on the other side of the zone and just let that shit work. You see that? I mean, look at right here, this this hammer in the golden zone, go long off this, this shot through two zones. Literally no reason to sell this contract if you're in the, you know, if you're in the contract, there's no reason to sell. I mean, we just shot up, consolidated right here. These this is these are pretty bullish candles right here in 15 minutes, so you know it keep going up and then bam, hit resist. Like, come on. This 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 is gonna, you know, in my opinion, this is like one of the best ways to trade. Um you, as long as you're patient, you wait for price to enter your zones, then you're good, you know. You don't want to play in the middle like um like this is this right here here's the obvious support obvious resistance you can you can definitely play this range you know you can play this support and resistance range right here if you want um but us as supply and demand traders we're interested we're interested in this we want this move right we don't want these little scalps back and forth here we want this you know we want this we don't want this not to say that this is bad, but as supply and demand traders, we want our best positions. We want the best risk reward. All right. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, is there any questions before I continue the presentation? All right, we're good to go. Let's see here. Oh my god. So the golden zone. Um, I was discussing the golden zone. Now you're probably wondering what it is. Um, a golden zone is a supply or demand zone that falls within the 0 0.5, 6, or 8, or the 786 Fibonacci levels. Um, so if we know that institutions have their order set at, you know, at a certain level at one of these zones, and we know that Fibonacci's, um, they also have large limit buys or sells at the same place, then we know that price is about to make a gigantic move up. 
I mean, right here on the ES1 hour, you can just see we enter a golden zone. And then like this huge hour we candle up. Here's another golden zone. Bam. I mean, every time price enters a golden zone, it just goes nuts. The, the trade that I showed you was out of a golden zone. That ended up being the trade of the day um, because we know that institutions and Fibonacci algorithms, they both have their order set right there. It's going to create huge moves. Um, okay. and yeah, these 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 uh, golden zones are going to give you the best risk to reward because they're often at really, really key levels of market structure. The 0.786 is, um, is like the, say we're in an uptrend, the 0.786 is kind of the last line in the sand for the uptrend. Um, as you can see, it's, here's the 0.786. Um, every time we touch it, we, we bounce out of it pretty hard. Um, because it's the last kind of the last line in the sand. After the, after that, it's it's nothing. It's no man's land. Um, your long is invalidated if 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 these levels break, right? <clears throat> so now we're gonna find a golden zone. Let's see. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and do. Uh, let me see if there's anything I don't have. Um, probably Exxon. Okay. So we'll clean the chart up. We're going to stick it over to the hourly chart. And you can really do this um, from any swing low to swing high. I personally like to do it from the most recent swing low to the most recent swing high, or if we're in a downtrend and bust. Um, so right now we're in the range of this swing low and this swing high. This swing low hasn't broken yet. This swing high hasn't broken yet. So we're going to draw a fib from here to here. And as you can see right away, we have a, uh, a golden zone. We have a 0.5 in a supply zone or, or a demand, whatever, whatever you want. So we'll paint that green so we know. And if you want... You could even place a level there so you know this is the level you know 105.16 is a 0.786 of the overall trend right and then here's the 0.786 same thing and now let's go ahead and examine it let's pretend all this forward price action isn't here because we drew it from here to here and we can pretend all this isn't here and let's kind of see what happened um, I mean, so right away, you can see every time price enters a golden zone, and we kind of dip below it here, didn't make a move down, but then we entered back into it, and then bam. Also, this 0.786 level, you can see how price kind of reacts to it. Rejection, rejection, rejection. You know, bam, we finally gap above it. Come down, we hold it as support, make this huge move up, and then we sell off out of it. Again, look where we catch consolidation right at this 0.786 level of the golden zone, and then we gap down. You know, now we're in a golden zone, we're collecting orders, we're collecting orders, and we made this huge move out of it. Right here, kind of the same thing, we kind of just chopped the whole day, and then we kind of just got down. Bam. So again, you can see these golden zones, they tend to make these huge moves out of it. You know, the more orders, the more limit orders buy sells that are in a zone, the better for you. You know, wow, I'm just looking at this, this is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful plays out of these zones, All right? Wow. Um. So any questions on the golden zone before I continue here? Uh, and feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions. Okay. 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 All right, cool. Again, if I'm going too fast for you guys, or if there's any questions, anything, you know, feel free to unmute yourself. And it's, not a, it's not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and continue. So we went from here. All right. All right. So how do we find these zones? Um, you can find them on any, on any time frame as long as you look for this specific candlestick combo. Um, I personally look for mine on the daily and hourly time frame. Those are my uh, two favorite time frames for drawing these zones at. Um, the main candlestick combo I look for um, 
And I figured this out just through like uh, drawing these over and over. And then one day I kind of realized that this is like kind of a candlestick combo that I kind of keep going to. Um, I'm looking for a doji followed by a bullish or bearish engulfing candle. So right here, you see the doji, the engulfing candle. I'll draw my zone from the bottom of the wick to the end at the bottom of the uh, the next wick's candle. So I don't take the whole wick. I just take the very bottom of it. So this bottom to this bottom, and I don't take the whole wick. Um, once you see this candlestick combo happen, that is a dem uh, demand or supply uh, a supply zone that just formed. Um, let's see here. Anything else? Yeah, that's good. Um, but again, not every zone is the same. You're going to want to take note of the previous and forward price action as you draw them. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Uh, make sure you include any wicks or candle closes or things that you feel are important uh, in your zone. Um, but that candlestick combo that I showed you, you could just go off of that and not even worry to worry about it. Um, and I'll show you that in the yeah. Um, A really good practice is, and this is kind of the way I draw my zones, I try to imagine the forward price action not being there and see if that zone would work if I were to trade that zone on that forward price action. Um, I believe the next thing we're going to do is chart up JPM. So before I chart that up, are there any questions on what I just, what I just discussed? Is it going too fast? You guys understand it? Can you redo them again? Um, what do you mean, Racy? You redo the... Never mind, never mind. I figured it out. That's okay. okay. All right, so, so what we're going to do now is chart up JPN, uh, JP Morgan. Hold on. Okay. Hey, Raj. What's up? Um, I think I missed what you said about the, 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 the engulfing candle. When I look at the slide that you had, I saw the doji, but what are we engulfing? That, that engulfing candle, I didn't see where it was engulfing any of the previous. Oh, okay, uh, the, so, the the previous, previous candle. so the previous candle, let me see if I can go back. Um, hold on. So see how this uh, candle just took out all this price action, including this doji here. That's what I mean by engulfing candles. Okay, engulfing the, the and so is it a a matter of how many candles that you no, determine no. whether it's engulfing or not? As long as it's no, no, one no, or two really candles, it's like one or two candles, because um, these are okay. on the hourly. These are hourly candlesticks. So if this okay. hourly candlestick took out all this price action, then you know, and you'll see it over and over. Um, I'll sh again, I'll show you on the chart. But this specific candlestick combo, if you just if you just uh, look for this, I mean, I'm sure there's other names for, I know strat, this might be like a one, two, three, four, I don't know, a one, two, three uh, inside, you know, I know there's lots of other names for it, but the most fundamental name for it is the doji followed by the engulfing candle. That's how I learned candlesticks, you know, this is a doji, this is a hammer candle, this is the engulfing candle, so engulf a bunch of price action. Um, I do know that some people like the engulfing candle to engulf the entire body of the previous one um but you know not everything is going to be that picture perfect in trading you know as i'm sure you guys notice in trading that not every bull flag is going to be picture perfect not every rising white is going to look like the ones you've seen in you know every book you've read you know what i mean not everything is picture perfect in the stock market and if i think if you follow the rules like that you're going to end up hurting yourself you know you got it's more about understanding price action it's more about understanding that Okay, it didn't engulf this little bit, but it did engulf all of this. You know what I mean? So, um, sorry, that's my little tangent on uh, <laughs> on, on engulfing candles and, and candlesticks and, and names for them. Um, so yeah, did you get that? Whoever was asking, I think it's your name. No, yeah, no, that was uh, that was perfect. I just when I saw it, I took it literally like it was supposed to engulf the previous candle, but yeah, I see exactly yeah. what you're saying is not. It's a few candles before, as long as it engulfs. Yeah, exactly. Because, so I'm really just one, two, for, like, third, yeah, fourth yeah. candle back. Yeah. Third exactly. candle back, fifth candle back, it it didn't go as well with those. So I'm mm -hmm. with you. Exactly. That one candle just straight up said, fuck you to all this price action. Sorry for my language. Um, oh, and I forgot this part. Oh, no, I, no, I did it. So yeah, so I draw from the bottom of that candle, from the bottom of that doji to the very bottom of the next boat. So from here to here. Um, so that, that, so now we're going to chart up JPM. Um, I believe it's a fresh chart. So you guys can see how we do this. Um, I guess it's not a fresh chart. Let me just go ahead and clear the drawings. Um, I'll move that. Cool. Um, so first thing I'm going to do, hold on, let me get the chat. I don't want to forget any chat. 
the three bar reverse strat reverse. So yeah, yeah, again, again, there's names for I mean, no, there's this there's the strat strategy for it. I know there's the ITC things, I know, I know all of those things. i you know, I know them all. But to me, it's just the, you know, it's just the candlestick combo. It's the the doji followed by the engulfing. It's the it's the hanging man followed by, you know. I just, I just, I'm, you know, I'm very, I'm very uh, a fundamentalist. You know, everything, everything, uh, I, 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 everything is, it comes down to the fundamentals is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I'm very much a proponent of the fundamentals. That's why you guys always hear me talking about volume and, and, and things of that nature. It's, it's very fundamental to trading. So, um, yeah, that's my spiel on, on fundamentals. So. <laughs> The first thing I would do is go onto the daily chart and I'm going to be looking for that specific candlestick combo, the one I just discussed. Um, so I believe this would be the one right here. So we kind of this doji here. And then see this right here. We took out this, we took out this, and this is just a huge candle down, right? Again, it doesn't take out the entire com uh, the, the entire thing here. But let's imagine this forward price action not being here, right? And let's just do this. And then I draw mine this pink so I know that these are daily demand zones. And again, imagine this forward price action not being here. You could have just played this daily supply zone right here. And you know, the very next candle would bam. You see that? This is what I mean by I try to imagine the forward price action not being there because you see what happens when you play that specific zone. So there, that is now my daily supply zone. Um, next thing I'm gonna look for is the daily demand zone. And again, I'm looking for that same combo. I'm looking for a, a doji followed by an engulfing. We don't really take out this, we take out that. Um, no. Yeah, we could say that. Not only is this, oh, I should have said this. Um, I do only look for mine on the uh, on regular trading hours. Uh, I'm going to say this is going to be the daily demand zone because um, <laughs> we really we gapped up. And then if there was a candlestick here, it took out a lot of stuff. Um, so this is going to be my daily demand zone. I'm obviously not going to take it up to here. So what I would do is just right there, just like that. From the bottom of the wick to just the very bottom of the body. Again, not everything in trading is going to be picture perfect, you know. Um, and I, I can't even imagine the forward price action now that you haven't been there. When I don't see that specific combo in any of this price action, so it is just chalk to me. I'm not going to draw a demand zone there. Um, oh, here, here, here's one. Yeah, right here. Again, not picture perfect, but imagine this forward price action not being there. I'm gonna draw it. I'm gonna draw this doji from the bottom of this doji right here. And let me know if you guys can't see that right there to right there. And again, you can see every time price came up, we kind of, you can kind of just play the range between these two uh, daily demand zones, right? So now these are gonna be my major targets, right? I'm expecting price to come all the way back down to here for JPL. Next thing I'm gonna do is go over to the one hour time frame. And I'm gonna look for the zones here. I'm gonna look for the same specific candlestick combo, obviously. Um, but especially on the hour time frame, it's not gonna be perfect. That's why I say every zone is gonna be different. Um, so right here. This sticks out to me right here. You see this rejection here? Wick, 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 rejection, rejection. You guys see that? So what I'm gonna do? Oops, I was looking for a magnifying glass. Right there. I see it now. Okay. So I'm gonna take my rectangle. You see this doji here followed by this huge move down. Um, and this candlestick kind of just took out all this price action right here. So I'm going to take it from the top of the doji. Let me just color this. And I do my uh, hourlies through again, just so I know. 
Now, I'm looking at previous and forward price action at the same time. And what I want to do is I see this, see this right here kind of barely touching it. What I'm going to want to do in that case is drag it up to make sure I catch that lick because that's obviously a pretty important level that we bounced out of pretty hard. And now I'm looking at the forward price action as well. And imagine it's not there, right? So you could have taken it short here, long here, long here. This looks good to me. Yep, I have this wick. You see right here, you got a huge bounce out of it. All right. Next thing I notice is these huge candlesticks, right? And then I noticed this doji as well. Excuse me. So what I'm going to do, take my rectangle again. I'm going to draw it from the bottom of this doji. I'm going to make sure to include this wick. I'm going to make sure to include this candle open right here. And I want to make sure to include this consolidation right here. So see, I got this candle bounce, this candle wick, this consolidation, all in this one zone. So see, I kind of have the best of both worlds in one zone. And now, now, now good, good, good. Oh, that's an echo. Okay, we're good. <laughs> All right, and now we are in the zone now. So if I were to look at JPM off of open, I would definitely, my bias would be to the upside if we're holding this zone. I see that we're basing in this zone right now. So I would expect a pop into open, uh, maybe up until this zone, and then we continue our downturn on JPM. Uh, let's keep going here. I mean, again, you don't have to, I mean, oh, let me just uh, go ahead and unmute yourselves if you want. I'm going to unmute everybody. Yeah. Again, go ahead and unmute yourself if you want, if you want to talk. Um, let's see here. All right, so what I'm actually going to do as I'm exploring this price action more, I see we got these pretty nasty rejections right here. So I'm going to take my zone, and I'm just going to drag it down a little bit, right? Um, and again, this is showing you, again, just want to show you that every zone is different, right? Um, you don't have to do that. Uh, I do kind of make my zone slightly bigger than normal just because I want to include all this. Like, I'm as I'm dragging it down, I'm also noticing these rejections here. So I'm probably going to drag it down a little bit more. Make sure I capture these rejections as well. Now look at my zone, right? Now you can kind of see that this, this is a big money zone. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Raj. Uh, the pink... The pink one is going to be the the daily? Yes, yeah. So the pink yeah. one and the dailies that we found when we first started charting the Sorry, I just missed that part. Yeah. Exactly. So, so far, so good. JPM is kind of looking good. I do notice this huge wick, so I want to include this somehow. Um, but I don't see anything clear. What I'm going to do is explore some price action uh, while keeping this wick in mind, right? So I want this wick but I gotta see where that wick kind of came from. You know what I mean? It didn't come from nowhere. Um, okay. So right here would probably have that wick in it. Um, yeah. Now this is coming up against a daily demand zone, but I don't care if my hourlies and my daily demand zones overlap. I just need to know that this is a daily demand zone. Um, if an hourly overlap, that is gonna give me more confidence in a trade. I just need to know that this is a daily demand zone, so I don't care how close they are to my hours at all. Um, so what I'm noticing is uh, after these rejections, we keep catching these giant wicks out of it. See, we keep getting uh, stuff. The sellers keep getting stuff right here. So what I want to do is get a rectangle, and I want to get this doji right here, this one right here, and this one right here. Uh, this isn't a doji. I mean, wait, so I want this doji and this wick, right? I'm going to start at this wick, go up to this doji, and I'm going to probably drag it up a little bit more, make sure I capture the whole wick. I'm going to go back and see if that captured that one uh, anomaly wick that I, that I want. And see, look, see, this wick, it didn't come from nowhere. It came from that zone. You guys see that? It didn't come, like, that's not an, an anomaly. That's an institutional uh, supply zone. And then now you can see, now you kind of got a nice little range going on, right, that you can play back and forth, right? Okay, so that looks good. And you guys don't have to go further back. I do think preparation is really good in the stock market. 
So I make sure to, um, you know, make sure to have a lot of zones, you know, so I don't really have to worry about it um, if we gap down or gap up. Um, let's see here. Okay, so I noticed this right here. Um, again, I don't think this came out of nowhere, so I'm going to explore backwards price action. We'll keep this in mind. I see this right here. Um, yeah, kind of right there, huh? Um, and then, okay, that looks more, yeah, that looks right. Okay, so what I'm going to do, you see we kind of wicked up here. And then uh, we looked up here again, and then we got we just we just came down and completely died. Um, and not only that, we also wicked up from here. So what I'm gonna do, this is a pretty nice zone here. So what I'm gonna do is start from here, go like this. And here's that candlestick combo I was talking about, the doji followed by the. I know it's not a perfect engulfing, but this is what I mean. You know, this is what I mean. The the doji followed by. This huge candle upwards or downwards. Um, and look at all these wicks in this zone now. This is a really nice zone. Wait, we caught this, we caught this right here, and let's see if we caught what we wanted. Exactly. See, again, I, I told you this this didn't come out of nowhere. This came from a zone. We found the zone right here. You guys see that? So these zones are really, they're really no joke. Um, let's keep going here. Uh, I want to find something in the middle here. This is obviously something. So I see this huge move up, this huge move up, consolidation, these works. I want it all. And then I see this huge move down. Okay. Um, so while keeping all this in mind, let's see, we gotta find the best place to start. And this is where I'm looking for that specific candlestick combo, because I'm looking for the best place to start drawing my zone. And I'm not seeing it though. I'm not seeing it. Um okay. Okay, so in that case, I gotta try my best to just make sure to include all I love this is all. All right, so I see this huge move up, this huge move up, this work, and then yeah, all this. So what I'm gonna do again take on that thing off. Start at this wick right here. And just take the whole wick. Let me see what I got here. I got this, got this, got this. I got all these rejections here, got this bounce out of it. So what I'm actually gonna do is drag this up. Make sure I capture this wick right here. Uh, make sure I capture that. Got that. Got that. Okay, I don't have this huge move down yet, so I'm going to keep looking for another zone somewhere between here and here. Um, let's see. We're kind of, let me see. Make sure there's two zones. Okay. I do like to keep my zones about uh, $2 to $1.50 apart because uh, day trading, you know. For options contracts, so I could you know, at least get a dollar move out of our contract. So I try to keep them like two dollars apart. Um, so I noticed this huge move down. I noticed this huge move down. I'm kind of looking for like what started this. Like, let's see. Okay. Here's that specific candlestick combo. I have to look for it. Here it is. The small doji followed by, again, I know it's not perfect, but you know, look at that. So I'm going to take my rectangle. Bam. Take my, take the whole wick, take that. And again, I'm looking at for a price action and there. You see that? That's where it came from. Bam. The huge move down. There it is again. Bam. That huge move down. So see? Off of that specific candlestick combo, you got two like month, like this is your month if you caught these candlesticks, right? <laughs> Pretty nice. Off of that candlestick combo, I can't even find it. Oh, there it is, right there. Off of that candlestick combo, you see that? Huge moves out of it, off that one, and it just keeps working. Um, what I'm probably going to do now is make sure I get this somehow. Um, I might drag this up a little bit and just try, try my best to make sure I grab it. There. Again, showing every zone is different. This is how I draw mine. But there we go. Got that. Got that. No, I'll get transition. Okay, JPM looks pretty much ready to trade now. Next, I'm going to do 
is look for my golden zones. Um, so I'm looking for the overall trend. This is the hourly. And I'm looking for the range that we're in, the most recent. Um, let's see. So from here to here, this is the range that we're in. I'm going to drop the Fibonacci from the swing low to the swing high and see if there's any golden zones. Okay, there's not a golden zone in the 0.786, but there's one right here in this big one. So this is a 0.618. I'm going to do, let's see. Come on. Oh, there it goes. I'm just going to color mine green. Um, let's see, nothing here. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that looks good to me. Look like there's only one golden zone. And that's the 0.618 level. Since we are at this 0.618 level, I do expect uh, JPM to get at least a pop into open, at least to this supply zone here before heading back down, maybe catching resistance. Um, it does kind of look a little like a little double bottom action actually here on JPM with this being support right here. Um, now that I see it, you know, we could be looking at some double bottom action on JPM. Um, let's keep an eye on this actually. I'm gonna keep an eye on this off the open. It might be also might be a really nice play off. Um, yeah, because I would expect us to maybe uh, if we open this golden zone. Yeah, if we open this golden zone, this would be this would be really nice. I don't want to gap up. I want to open in the golden zone, then I can take a position. Okay, cool. All right, so that's it for charting JPM. Um, you know, real quick. No, nah, I'll say after the class. I'll be another class. All right. Um, hold on. Let's see what we So for the hourly, yeah, I, I just go back until I'm pretty much satisfied with how many zones I have. Um, let's see. So it looks like I went back. I mean, it looks like I just went back to like December 2022. 20, yeah. And then for the daily, um, I am just looking for that specific catalyst combo. It doesn't matter how far back I go. And once I find that combo, um, that's, that's the end of my daily charting. Right. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay, that's about it. Let's see. Yeah, and again, how far back you go, it really it really it's not super, super duper important. Just, you know, as long as you understand the concepts, I know I can get kind of obsessive with it. I go back pretty far to make sure I, you know I cover up as much of the uh, of as much of the chart as possible. Um it makes me better at finding them. I get really, you know, you don't just draw them once and you're like a freaking king at drawing supply and demand zones. It's drawing them over and over again and training your eye to find them. So I do like to kind of just go back personally, go back pretty far and just draw as many as I can. You know, that way I just get better at it. You know what I mean? You, you don't just, you don't just uh, practice something once and then that's a wrap. Um, let's see. Yeah, JPM looks good. It looks ready to go. Um, I don't expect this to come down here anytime soon. Let's do my Rod, what's that? I have a quick question. So, yeah. as far as how you drew the golden zone, why did you say that there was a golden zone at point six one eight, but not one at point seven eight six? Is that what it was? Yeah, the point seven eight six because there wasn't a zone at the point seven eight six level. So I'll do it again real quick from the most. Unless there was, and I completely missed it, which I can totally see myself doing. So I took it from here to the screen high. You know, make sure I get the most recent range that we're in. We are in this range because this low hasn't broken, this high hasn't broken. So this is a 0.618 level, this blue line right here. And mm -hmm. it falls within a zone that we drew previously, right? So that's why that's a golden zone. There isn't a zone at the 0.786 level. Um, yeah, I don't see one. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah, there wouldn't be a golden zone there. It would just be any supply or demand zone that one of these three levels fall within. And for JPM, it's only the 0.618. But you could do it on the overall trend, unlike the daily chart, and even look for it there. Right? Here's the most recent swing low to the most recent swing high in the daily chart. 
and see if there's any. And look at that, the 0.786 actually falls within this daily demand zone of like this huge macro trend, right? Um, and the 0.5 also falls within this daily demand zone. So that's kind of a pretty funny coincidence, um, how the overall trend kind of, they kind of fall into these daily demand zones. It's kind of cool. Um, you can do it that way. I, I, again, I just go on the hourly. I take my Fibonacci from the most recent, you know, the range that we're in. And bam, the 618 falls within a zone that I just drew. So that's a, that's a golden zone. Um, oh. Yeah. As if I mean, the supply, those supply and demand zones. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. We know, if you were in the, in the previous Fibonacci class, we know that uh, that algorithms, they put their orders in at the 0 0.5, the 0 0.618, and the 0 0.786 because they offer the best risk to reward. Um, if you were, if you see it happen live, it kind of it kind of makes uh, more sense when you see it happen live. Like that ES trade, I know a lot of people saw it live. It bounced perfectly off the 0 0.786 level. Um, so yeah, that's why if one of these three levels fall within one of these zones, it's going to be a place where you're going to want to take a position. I mean, let's go ahead and explore, actually. Because see, we got this crazy hourly candle on JPM once it hit this golden zone. So I would like to see this on a smaller time frame. And you see that as soon as we got down into it and just immediately got buys. And they're not really strong. I mean, they didn't really make it a huge move. You didn't catch this huge candle up. You would have just been caught in chop. Um, but it does look like fairly bullish consolidation, in my opinion. Um, because we kind of got some double bottom action here on the smaller time frame. Um, let's see, did this high break? This high did break via a wick, I think. So that is telling me that the market does want to go up, and it looks also like we held this support right here. We also got some double bottom action right here. Um, so it does look like bullish accumulation here. Um, in my in my opinion, I do. Hey, Raj. Think, what's up? Uh, I'm sorry. I want to make sure. I'm not sure if I'm reading your your zones right. Uh huh. Uh, so the blue or the golden zone, wherever zone that you've drawn, you're gonna take a position when it's leaving those zones, right? So the the your your play area, you're in the play in the voids, not not during the zones, right? So if we look at what you have there, once it breaks. You know, we have confluence that it is breaking out of that zone. You take a position right about where your cursor is and um, then ride it up. Or, and then on the opposite side, you so ride actually, it down, right? Yeah, so I actually have a few different strategies uh, on how to trade these zones. Um, like one, my main one these days is the Fibonacci. So what I would do since we're in a zone is say I drew it from the swing low to the swing high. I would have taken a position here at the 0.5 and um, probably scalped it up. And it looks like that 0.5 worked all day. Uh, let's drag it up. Actually, right here again, we kind of got in the in the zone here and we can take it up. There's several ways you can trade them. Another way I would have done it, um, as you were saying, I would have done this as well. Um, so price breaks out of a zone, right? Um, I wouldn't get in this strategy. I wouldn't get in until the zone, if we break out of a zone and I'm not in a position, I want to see the zone retest the support. So once we break out here, I'm not going to take a position until I see a bullish candlestick, which is right here. You see this hammer right here? And you could have scalped that, right? Bam. Um, yeah, so there's 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 several ways for you to, for you, to you know, a skin a cat. And then, you know, Here's a good short position you probably could have taken. Um, so now that I see that we're coming down, we're kind of breaking support over and over. I would probably do something like this, you know, draw Fibonacci until uh, price comes to a place that I like, and then take a position. So yeah, there's def there's definitely there's definitely several ways to to play these zones, and actually I do believe I'm going to get into that next. How to how to actually take a trading zone. Uh, so before I get into that, are there any questions on how to actually draw these zones? Um, the next part is going to be on how to trade, I believe. Let's go ahead and go into the presentation. Um, let's 
All right, so we went over how to find the gold results. Um, yeah. yeah, just remember these are zones that have both large institutional buys and or large institutional and algorithmic orders. Um, the Fibonacci, they those are normally uh, played by algorithms and other traders, but but those crazy candles come from the algorithms. Um, all right, so yeah, we reach how to trade these zones. So uh, when price reaches your zone, you know from uh, past data excuse me, that price is going to make a huge move either to the upside or the downside. So on a trending day, you're going to look for signals that the trend is about to continue, and you're going to enter a position in the direction of the trend. You're going to be looking for your bull flags. You're going to be looking for pullbacks and, you know, like I just showed you, a pullback that held support. Um, my personal favorite is the low volume pullback. That is when, uh, say that we're creating a bull flag on top of the zone on low volume. That to me is an A plus setup. Um, so that's one of my favorite setups. On a ranging day, um, and you guys got to remember that I know it kind of doesn't feel like it during the past few weeks that the market kind of just ranges 90% of the time. So uh, when price does get to a zone, um, and it's ranging, your bias should be that price is about to reverse. So unless the day proves you wrong, um, you're going to look for signals that price is about to reverse. You're going to want to take a position opposite of the trend. Um, again, like I showed you in that ES, because um, the ES came up into resistance. It started making a, you know, a rising wedge right into, right into that 0.786 level. It was a beautiful trade. Um, so again, you're going you're gonna to look for a pullback. So, so we're trending up. You're going to look for a pullback. And then once it starts going back in the direction of the trend, if it fails to make a new high, that's telling you that the market is ready to head down now. You can also look for your head and shoulders patterns, your EMA crossovers. Um, you know, there's there's several ways. And I'm going to go ahead and discuss what I do next. Um, I think that's also the end of the presentation, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah. So I'm going to show go over some trade strategies. Thank you for your time. If you do have any questions, you guys know me on Discord. Um, go ahead and send me a DM. I'm super happy to answer and help you guys out. Um, so in that case, let's go ahead and find some some trades, how we can trade these zones. Um, but, so I've been trading futures a lot lately. Um, let's go ahead and check out futures. Actually, we'll do SPY, so that we believe most people will be trading SPY or the indices. Um, yeah, so we'll do this or right, let's look for some trades um let's see here let's see so i already discussed this on the double bottom that hit my zone i took calls to the upside um so this is you know this is a way for you to play these zones if you know you recognize that we just double bottomed in the zone you could play calls you could even play calls i didn't even notice this you could have played calls off of this double bottom right here see we came down Bam, right there. Um, another thing you could have done is played the downside. You know, I mean, this seems like a really volatile day, so it looks like you have to be fast today or this day. But um, right here, when you see this gravestone put in on the three minute, right into a zone, you know, go ahead and take a position. Um, what I would normally do is set my stop on just the other side of the doji that um, show position right here. So I would take a position in this doji and my stop would just be the high of that doji, right? Right there. And I would try to take it to the next zone, but I am a scalper. I am a scalper. This is a 3.58 restore zone for this year. So not bad, not bad at all. Look right there, would be that stop. There we go. That's a, That looks better to me. So my stop is normally the doji. Um, and then I'm normally a scalper. So I do try to take it to the next zone, but you know, I'm a very C green take green type of trader. Um, let's see, another one. Let's find some good ones. Um, let's see, so here's a pretty here's a pretty good one. We have this huge sell off. I mean, this is a pretty good one too. I mean, off these zones, there's so there's so especially on spy, um, there's so many opportunities. So see, we opened up 
here in this zone. Oh, actually, I took this trade. So we open up in this zone, and right away you see that we failed to make new highs. So bam, we come up, make this high. Next thing we do, we pull back, come up, fail to break that high. You see that? That should tell you right away that we should be looking at puts because we're not making new highs. So you could have taken another position here and had this uh, had this level right here be your stop, or you could come down, confirm that it's gonna break and then get in on the retest, right? You see that we're retesting the zone, rejecting it. At the same time that we're rejecting it, we're rejecting this DMA right here. This right here is kind of my A plus setup. So once we break out of the zone, we come up and we're really close to this EMA. Normally what I would do is take a short position and my stop would be an open above this EMA. And um, well, let's see, do a short position here. Right here. So I would take position right at this EMA here. Take it down to the next zone. And it looks like a 12.42 risk reward. Um, yeah, 12.42 risk to reward off of this setup right here. And you stop just being uh, this EMA right here. Um, again, the way I trade, I keep my risk really, really, really tight. If you guys had live traded with me, you would see that. But um, I normally only risk a few points on, on ES at the most. If I'm trading SPY, I'm really only risking the EMAs. Um, oh, thank you, thank you, Bill. Um, you know, it's all about risk management. You know, as traders, we're risk managers first. You know, we let the market take care of the profits. We we manage our risk and just let the market do its thing. You know what I mean? Let's see here. Let's keep going here. Um, so I'm gonna go off the long trade. So again, price came down. Uh, we're catching buys here. We're catching buys here. You know, catching buys. I wouldn't be super interested uh, until we put in a pretty bullish candlestick or or or, or this EMA start turning green. Once this EMA turns green, um, that means that EMA crossover has happened. The the EMAs have crossed over bullish. So that means the 21 EMA is now below the 80 EMA and acting as support. That's what happens then. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so that's what happens when this EMA turns green. Um, I used to have a lot of EMAs on my thing, but this one EMA tells me everything I need. Once it turns from green to red and red to green, that tells me that... Uh, that tells you that price has has turned bullish or bearish. Um, what indicator is that? So this is the uh, this is actually so credit to Moody on this indicator. He showed me this indicator, and I cannot I cannot thank him enough for it. So this is the EMA. Go ahead and maybe take a take a screenshot of this one. This is the EMA nine twenty plus RSI indicator. And what I have done to make it work better for me is I've unchecked all of these. Right, I've unchecked all of these, so now it only shows me when the EMAs have crossed on the three minute and 15 minute time frames. So, once these EMAs cross on the three and 15 minutes, it's going to turn from red to green or, 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 or uh, green to red, you know. And you can play with these how you like them. I'm a scalper, so I really like to take advantage of these short term momentum plays. So, I'm just looking for the three and 15 minute EMA crossovers. Once that happens, you know, that's kind of like full-time frame continuity in a way, right? But we, but all your EMAs are, are stacked positive now on multiple time frames, if that makes sense. Um, so this indicator for me has been a game changer as far as using EMAs goes. Um, so yeah, let's go. So once this turns green here, um, you know, this could scare you out, um, especially this candlestick. But if you would keep your stop, let's say right here, I could see taking a position right here because we put in two hammers right here. So we came up, we started putting in all these buying wicks. You see this cluster of buying wicks here? That to me is bullish. I really don't care about the color of the candlestick. Um, I might just change them all the same color here in a minute. Um, I just see these 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 buying wicks forming. And if I could just show you the candlestick replay, um, if you see these cam, if these wicks are forming really fast, Say you're on the three minute time frame and you see these candlesticks coming down, but then instantly get stuffed. That's showing you really aggressive buying. And the way these cluster of buying looks are formed, I do think that's what happened. So what you could do, take a long position based off this little tweezer right here. And again, for my strategy, I only risk these dojis because that's telling me where all the buyers are stacked up. See all these dojis? So that's all I'm going to risk. If I'm wrong, then it's whatever. 
I keep my wrist really, really tight, um, but it does tend to work out for me really well. Um, and there you go. That is a, an 11.46 wrist reward ratio if you take it zone to zone. Um, not a single red candlestick. There is no reason to get out of this trade, right? Um, perfect. Hey, What's up? You, uh, you said a couple of times about risking the dojis, uh, the wick on the dojis. This mm -hmm. is on a three minute time frame. Do you ever, is that always, like, if that's your rule, do you ever change from the three minute to a five or a one um, relative to where you're going to stop out at? Um, so let's see. I actually have a good trade example about that. Um, hold on. Let me, let me check here. 921 EMA. So I'll, I'll show you the, I'll show you the, uh, in here in a second. Um, so I try not to change my stop if I'm on a three minute time frame, but let me show you something on ES where, where I switched to a five minute time frame and it, and it, um, and it stopped me from freaking, from, where did it go? It stopped me from, um, from really losing a bunch of money. Um, so right here. Right, right there. Hold on, let me just make sure. No, no problem. So right here, um, where's my long position for me? Take a long. I took a long position. I, I was going to take a short position. That's right. I was going to take a short position. Right here, so around here. I was gonna take a short position and I was just gonna risk these dojis right here. Oh, sorry, short position. Because we were breaking down, breaking down, and then I saw this um I saw this bear flag right here, right? And I did not get into this trade because of what you said. Um right here i switched to a five minute time frame and i realized that we were just putting in a bullish like we, the three minutes showed that we broke all this support you see the three minutes show we broke all this support right here and i was about to get in short but the five minutes showed me that it was just a hammer um and they were just trying to get people loaded up short so they could rip it to the other side so actually um it happened on live too we we didn't take it short. We we flipped immediately, and what we did was get in right here and took it up here for a few points. Um, hold on. Oh, thank you, MJ. Appreciate it. I think I also used the Fibonacci here as well. Um, oh, I did, but it was for the entire day. So not only that. Let's see. So we're at six thirty channel. Okay, so we had the Fibonacci up as well. Bam, there we go. There we go. Okay, now now it's coming back. See, so see on the three minute, this Fibonacci broke and I was about to take it short. I switched to the five minute before I, I switched to short and I realized that we did not close under it. So that was me uh, pretty much changing changing up my whole my whole game plan, uh, really. And then I didn't, I didn't chase this move up. What we ended up doing was taking the entry right here, holding the 0.786, and I got out once we broke the volume shot. I don't know if anybody held those, but I think if you held those, it would have been pretty good. Um, so yeah, that yeah, that's that's how my stop would my whole my whole game plan would change really. I'm not sure that answered your question. Um, let's see. Like here's that trade recap. Did that answer your question at all? Or do I need? No, no, that was it. Uh, uh... Okay. Uh, so it's not like you kept your stop on the three. You keep you you kind of stay on the three, but upon entering the trade, you saw something on the five. Yeah, where exactly. if you were to enter that trade, you would have stayed on the three. You still would have kept that stop loss at the yeah, bottom of that wick. Exactly, and I would have gotten smoked. <laughs> <laughs> very, very much so. Um, but here's one where I would not change my stop loss at all on the three minute. Um, my stop loss was this was such a beautiful trade. My stop loss was just the other side of this wick right here. Um, and there was no way that was going to change because this wick touched that point. That it touched that 0786 Fibonacci of the golden zone. So that to me was like, if that breaks, then then definitely the trend is going to continue, but it didn't. And we just 
this was the trade of the day because this trade it broke support like it was such a beautiful trade oh my god and then not only that you see the ema crossover happen as well the ema went from green to red um, that means the ema's crossed over to green 15. you could have taken a position right there and you know rode, rode the whole thing down so again there's several ways to skin a cat when you when you when you use these when you use these supply zones right like you didn't catch the break, but you catch the retest, right? You see this this selling wick. You could have done the same thing. Um, again, this is something I would have definitely done. I think the, yeah. So I if I didn't get in here, I no, I didn't get in here. I got in right here. I would just risk the other side of the doji again. This doji right here, forty four oh six is the level. So again, I'm really I really only risked. Oh wow, that's a good ass trade. I'm really only risking a little bit because because I'm only taking trades in zones. I'm taking trades in places where I know if I'm wrong, then then the other side is going to pay even fatter because these are you know really big areas of support and resistance. These are big, big, big zones where you know if they fail to hold, then 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 you're good and then you're going to just get paid on the other side, right? Like here's Amazon. Uh, here's the last trading day on Amazon. We opened this zone, came up. Instantly got stuffed in the zone, came down, instantly got bought up in the zone, like, and then I would have taken a trade for the rest of the day on Amazon until we got up to right here. And then bam. And this is actually a pretty good one right here. Um it's not the most prettiest. It does look like a bullfrog. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right here. It's not the prettiest bullfrog in the world. But but it is, right? Um, but I see all these uh, selling wicks as well. You see all these selling wicks. Oh my god, I can't get the right. <laughs> you see all these selling wicks right here, on this cluster of selling wicks. So that that should tell you that there's a lot of there's a lot of aggressive selling going on as soon as we touch the zone. Um, so then the trend line broke. You could have taken a position on this on this. You could have taken a position. Right here, once the trend line broke and the EMA crossed over, you could have taken a position. You could have taken a position uh, right here and just risked the other side of the bull flag. Um, like there, again, there's several, several ways. You see the risk to reward. Like if you're wrong, then you can just flip. Um, but it's not often you'll be wrong when you, when you play these times. I did show you, uh, I did show you a loser, but like, look, we just failed. Like you should know this is the high of the day and we're bull flagging but we keep failing to you know break the high a day and then you know we just dump the rest of the day um i don't think i would have taken a trade off over on amazon these are way too volatile for me. this is the trade i would have taken on amazon for sure for sure yeah um let me see something else let's see yes one i've been trying to keep this a lot lately um, I've been using the Fibonacci a lot too. I'm trying to find trades without them because I just want to focus on on this. Um, wow, these are very old. Let's see. Uh, here's one I would definitely take in, and I believe this is midnight too. Oh, this is oh, this is the overnight session. Um, right here. Again, not picture perfect, but I see this double bottom right here in the zone. Again, it's not picture perfect, but you could have taken that double bottom. Just recognize that we're close enough to a golden zone, and you could have taken the whole thing up. Um, I gotta redo my ES zones. These ES zones are 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 months old. They 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 didn't work. Um, wow. So here's another pretty good one right here. What day is this? So this is midnight, and then this is. Three in the morning. Okay, I see several uh, opportunities to trade here, but I believe the safest one would be this one right here. So we break out of a zone. I wouldn't take the chase. I wouldn't chase. I wouldn't chase this either until this put uh, this candle got put in. This hammer that was holding my zone as support, um, holding this EMA as support, and then you see these huge candles up. I mean, this is 73, 74. Five. That's like five points. 
again, like five points on ES. If you trade those full size ES contracts, each point is fifty bucks. Um, so this again, this could be a whole freaking night. You got like five of those contracts, right? And I personally trade the micro contracts five at a time. So this would have been twenty five dollars a point for me. So that would have been pretty nice for me as well. Um, and again, same thing. We just came down, held support, and you could have just taken the whole thing. The whole thing. Wow. Love it. Okay, I believe that's probably yeah, that's awesome. All right. Any questions before I get going? I believe that's it. Did everybody get the EMA indicator? Thank you to MJ. MJ threw the E the the indicator into the chat if anybody needs it. Um, this is gonna be or this is recorded if you guys need to watch it later. Um let's see here. Yeah, no problem, no problem. EMA doesn't show up. Hold on. Let's see here. Let's go on to here. Um oh that's why it's called something completely different on on here. Let's pull it up. Okay. Go ahead and type this into the indicator. Multiple time frame continuity with crossover alerts. Go ahead and take a screenshot of that and that should get the indicator to pop up. All right, it's on there. That's weird how it's called this here and it's been completely different. Hey, no problem, absolutely no problem. Uh, I appreciate you guys as well. Like coming up here on a Saturday night, late Saturday night, taking a look at me talking about charts and shit. Like, man, that really shows you guys the dedication. That shows you guys are going to really kill the game. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. Um, again, if you have any questions, anything, just DM me. My DMs are always open. I'm, I'm literally up all night. So, yeah, it's never too late to DM me. Um, with that being said, guys, thank you again. I really, really appreciate it. And I am out of here. Uh, when's futures live trading? Um, so I do live trade futures every Friday, um, and every Thursday night. Um, and yeah, futures. You can if you trade futures with me on Friday, you can take the same place that I take on spy contracts. Um, they're not gonna move. Um, so I'm gonna shoot for eight. Um, it's gonna be after Jordan and Moody have their live trading. Um, so. Whenever Jordan and Moody are done live trading on Fridays, I will take over and and continue on from there, and we'll catch some really nice. You know, I know they they normally trade the morning session. I'm much better at trading the intraday session. Again, if you guys saw me on live the other day, murder the intraday session. You know, a lot of people think that the morning is the only play. Oh come on, come hang with me. I will show you guys how to trade the intraday session, and we'll make bags straight up. <laughs> it's not a problem. So, yeah, with that being said, guys, have a good one. I'm going to go do some other stuff. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to go do some uh, get ready for work and all that good stuff. And um, join me for live trading next Friday. See what I'm all about. See this Candle 6 form live. And, you know, maybe you can be, you can catch this well, as well. Because, hey, you know, I top and bottom tick the market all the time. You know, it's just, I'm not even surprised anymore when I do it. It just happens. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I will see you guys hopefully next Friday and we'll make some fat bags together. All right. Have a good one.